really taken a stand on anything that the people would be voting for. Um, but I think that this is really important. I've worked in the criminal justice system in a number of different capacities in the last 30 years, and um, I think mental illness is, is a critical issue that we deal with. It not only impacts the criminal justice system and our office and everybody who works in the criminal justice system, but it impacts the community, it impacts our state. Um, and so we have several questions that are pretty much no-brainers. Um, do you believe Bernalillo County needs to provide more mental and behavioral health services for adults and children? I mean, I, I don't know anyone who would say no to that. Um, it's just basic, um, simple common sense. Second question, do you believe we all benefit, we all benefit as a community, as a state, when essential services are provided for those in need of mental health services? Again, a question that is kind of like the ABC. <coughs> Third question, do you believe our community will be safer and healthier when critical mental health services are available to all of those who need them. Um, I think that, that we could be pretty unanimous on the answer to that. The issue um, before the public, which we will all vote on, is a 1-8% increase in gross receipts taxes. So 1-8 of one penny in gross receipts taxes, and that will go to provide these much needed mental health services. It tells elected officials, your vote will tell elected officials to prioritize funding for mental health services. We know why that's so essential. If it passes, the legislation moves forward in the next legislative session, which will be 2015. A task force, and, and to assure people that this money will be utilized as, as uh, prudently and effectively as possible, there will be a task force of stakeholders that will develop recommendations for funding based upon the needs of the community. And um, I imagine there'll be a lot of people at the table that will be providing information. It is expected that the tax would generate approximately $19 million yearly. I would contend that we're spending more than that now because those services are not provided. Um, we all know that across our country, the prison systems are the number one health, mental health care providers in the nation. Um, how humane is that? And how effective and efficient is that? The, as we've said before, a task force of stakeholders will develop recommendations uh, for where the money will go. There'll be strong accountability and transparency for the management of these funds. So once again, everyone can be assured that their one-eighth of a cent in gross receipts taxes will be spent prudently and wisely. And frequent audits will be encouraged as part of um, finding legislation. So again, the money will be spent wisely and prudently. Um, what programs could be funded, you know, if we want to use our imagination, again, common sense too. Um, regional crisis stabilization facility, fund mental health and addiction treatment services that are currently unavailable, fund stable supportive housing for homeless struggling with mental illness. And I don't have the exact number or statistics, but we all know that a lot of our homeless individuals are veterans who have served our country honorably, and um, they suffer from mental illness, and, and they are homeless, and that only causes uh, further problems. We also know that a lot of people that are homeless are domestic violence uh, or victims of domestic violence. Um, when they don't have a place to stay, when they don't have medical help or any kind of uh, medical care, uh, they destabilize and cause and, and more bad things happen. I have heard it said, and I don't have the statistics, but that New Mexico has the number one, um, is, is number one out of all of our states in having mental health issues um, and problems, and we're number 50, number 50, so we're at both ends of the spectrum in terms of resources that are available to deal with those mental health issues. Um, increased funding for programs would make our community safer. It would result in taxpayer savings, and I can't, well, a lot of the work that we do involve people that are, are mentally ill. If they don't have to go through the criminal justice system, if we don't have victims, 
um, of crime. I mean, how, how can you argue that the community wouldn't be safer? Taxpayer savings, I think we're gonna pay one way or the other. It's, it's more humane and it's better that we pay up front and I think it's less costly than if we pay at the back end. And we have victims, we could possibly have homicides, other violent crimes, and then we're housing individuals in, in jails uh, where they can't get help. And eventually, most people that commit crimes, most people will be back out on the streets again. They're not serving life sentences. It will improve the quality of life for those getting help. And I would add that it will improve the quality of life for all of us who live in the community uh, because we'll live in a safer and healthier community. So the bottom line is we really are taking a stand, we're, we're kind of going out on a limb, saying vote yes in favor of, of mental health solutions. We all, we all have a lot of stake by being members of the community. Early voting begins tomorrow, Saturday, October 18th, and I plan on voting tomorrow um, to make sure that it happens. Election day is November 4th. And we hope you join us and vote yes on this very important issue. Um, I don't believe it's a political issue. And I think that it's really important that, that we take a stand as leaders in the community, as people who know and work with this problem on a daily basis. And uh, that we tell others this is important. This is important for us, for our children, our families, and, and for our community. And it's important to the criminal justice system as well. There's not a day that goes by, not a day, I could probably say not an hour that goes by in my job that I don't deal with some issue related to mental health. I would also suggest as well that most of us have families um, where mental health is an issue with at least one member, if not more than that. Um, there is no stigma, but we need treatment, we need resources um, to, to deal with um, those in need. And um, so we all encourage you to vote yes when you vote. And we all encourage you to vote. <laughs> I think that that's very important. We have two other individuals that are going to speak, um, one from the Public Defender's Office. And so I'll have them come up, introduce themselves, and, and speak. And I think, Jeff, you're going to be next. My name is Jeff Ryan. I'm with the Law Office of the Public Defenders here in Bernalillo County. Um, I want to just uh, make a couple of points, and one of them that we're talking about mental illness. This is an illness that we can make a difference with. We've got people in our community, in this county, who need some guidance and help from us in order to prevent acute episodes that all too often have led to tragedy. These people come from everywhere. They often involve people who are in military service, they're veterans, often people who suffer terrible accidents, traumatic brain injury, and sometimes post-traumatic stress disorder. People who suffer issues at birth, having to do with developmental disabilities, autism, sometimes Asperger's, and psychiatric issues, severe depression, bipolar issues, things of that nature. Mental illness is not a choice. And irrespective of politics and perceptions about this ballot process, people in our county need our help. These people don't want to stand out. These people want to integrate into our society and into our community. They don't want to be in jail. They don't want to be in the criminal justice system. But these are people who are on the edge without options. What we need is common sense and we need assistance. The solutions aren't really difficult. The people here in this community are available and they're ready, but we need additional resources. This requires commitment from us all. The courts deal with both the prosecution and defense of these people, and oftentimes these people have no place else to go because the police don't have any other options but to put somebody into custody. The courts have very few options in dealing with these folks, and that's why, as Carrie, as Ms. Brandenburg said, the Metropolitan Detention Center um, has one of the highest rates of incarceration of mentally ill people, um, certainly in the state, but uh, potentially in the country. If you can't solve the problem, 
in a jail, then people end up going to prison. And there are options to divert people out of this kind of a, a situation, this kind of a problem that affects us all. Because ultimately, we're all paying the price for this. If not on the front end, certainly on the back end. And what we're asking for is the kind of recognition that everybody in the community needs this kind of help, and we need it for all of us. Thanks very much, and I hope everyone votes in favor of this initiative. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Gary. My name is Peter Cooper, and what I do for a living is I'm a lawyer who works for people with mental disabilities and developmental disabilities here in Albuquerque and throughout the state. And there are five points that I'd like to make today. The first point is that Albuquerque's mental health system today is much worse than it was 30 years ago. In 1986, the National Center on State Courts studied our criminal justice system with respect to people with mental disabilities. What they found was that at that time, the University of New Mexico Mental Health Center had 59 acute care beds for people with psychiatric problems. Today, they have 48, nearly 30 years later. They found that at that time, UNM operated a transitional living program called Casa Ayuda with 30 beds. It is now closed. They reported about the other alternatives our community had in 1986. Vista Sandia Psychiatric Hospital, the Memorial Hospital, the Charter Hospital, the Loveless Psychiatric Unit, and all of those facilities are now closed. They also found that in 1986, our jail housed at any given time 19.5 individuals who received acute care inpatient services inside our jail. Today the number is over 100. In, just, not, in uh, just the last eight years, the number of people inside our jail who are receiving psychiatric care has gone from 400 to 900. So here in Bernalillo County, we have not de-institutionalized <coughs> people with psychiatric conditions, we have trans-institutionalized them put them in our jail system instead of into mental health services. The second point I want to make is that people are dying here in Bernalillo County in 2014 because they cannot access essential mental health services. We have seen police shootings of individuals who are in psychiatric crisis because they could not get care and because we don't have a mobile crisis response mental health capacity that many communities have and that we need. Recently, two men were beaten to death, who are homeless. A woman was run over by a truck who was experiencing psychiatric problems and homelessness. And most recently, Mary Ellen Gutierrez, who had just gotten out of the county jail, was raped and, and beaten to death. All of these people and their psychiatric conditions because of their psychiatric conditions are dead today. And if they had received mental health treatment, they might be among us. The third point I want to make is that we already know what to do with this money. In 1986, the National Center for State Courts reported what they saw we needed. We never implemented it. In 2004, the city paid for a consultant to design a crisis triage center. The city never paid for it. In 2007, there was a task force appointed by the legislature to say what to do about this problem. We never implemented their recommendations. In 2011, the Bazelon Center for Mental Health Law came to our town and made recommendations about how to improve these problems. We've never implemented their recommendations. Now, two weeks ago, October 2nd, the task force put together by the city and county published this report recommending what we need in this community. We can spend our $20 million implementing these recommendations. My fourth point is that the amount of money that a 1 8th percent increase in gross receipts tax would generate would be a game changer here in Birmingham County. 
that infusion of $19 million would fundamentally alter what our system looks like. Here's my last point. There are people who are saying they oppose this initiative because it's an advisory question and they take issue with that approach. Well, frankly, I have my concerns about that approach too. But here's the thing, those of you who vote no on this initiative because you don't like the mechanism for putting it on the ballot would be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So please don't do that. If you care about anyone in Bernalillo County who has a mental health condition, if you want them to be safe and healthy, then vote for this initiative. This is one time when, if the people lead, the leaders will follow. Thank you. Okay, do you all have any questions? Do you have any idea like what percentage of defendants you